Good afternoon. This is Angela with Parker's Permaculture. I am sitting in my car in Beaverton, Oregon. It is a gorgeous fall day. I'm here because one of my kids has a class that she is partaking in. That's why I'm not out in my garden. Otherwise, a day like today, I would be out doing yard work. I have a lot of firewood I need to split. Actually, um, a little bit late for it, but if I split it now, it will still be burnable by March. So I need to get to it. But anyway, First, let me say thank you to the folks who left really kind comments on my last couple of videos. I know that I've been a little slower posting. It's just a really busy season for me right now. Um, and thank you especially to the folks who engaged on the quick impromptu video that I made yesterday about being child-free doesn't entitle you to being childist. I feel like folks have a lot of thoughtful things to say and I appreciate your perspectives. If you are new to my channel or maybe you've only seen my directly permaculture related content, you might say, Angela, why did you make a video about parenting? Why did you make a video about discrimination against children? Well, permaculture is a design system for resilient living for all people. And it includes three ethics, earth care, people care, and fair share. And the second one, people care is one that can get a little bit neglected. And I think it's really important and it's important to me, I'm passionate about it, about talking about how we include people care for all people, because we can't create resilient communities if we don't actually have effective people care. That being said, the thing I want to talk to talk about today is also related to people care. I don't know if I'll cut in the, the meme yet or not, but I was scrolling social media here in my car for a few minutes in between rounds of doing emails. I like needed a break and I saw a meme that it was the third or maybe fourth time I've seen it in the last couple of weeks. And I thought, you know what, let's take a break and, and talk about it with you all. I could just do about it in my own head or I could talk about it with you all. And because I believe memes are an opportunity to learn and an opportunity to engage and learn how to do better, as I believe that memes are a tool that we can use as the entree point into a thoughtful conversation, a nuanced conversation, let's go ahead and talk about it. So we all know folks in our lives, and maybe we are that person in somebody else's life who is like, I don't want to put chemicals in my body. Mm, I don't want to buy that conventional food because it might have chemicals. I want to buy organic. I don't want to use that commercial laundry detergent because it's got chemicals. I don't want to do X, Y, Z because chemicals. I don't want to ingest them. I don't want to breathe them. I don't want to have them on my body. We all know people have said that, right? And as a response to that, a very smug response, folks say like, mm, don't you know everything is chemicals? Oh, that dangerous chemical, dihydrogen monoxide. I was a biology major. I almost was a chemistry major. I love chemistry. Um, and so for me, it's really heartbreaking to see in America the significant lack of scientific literacy that we as a community, that we as a, a nation have, right? We are woefully scientifically ignorant in America as I, I think can be attributed to many factors, not the least of which would be religious indoctrination and evangelical America being really afraid of our children understanding science. So that being said, some folks think that they're real smug and real sharp and real witty by having this retort. Like, mm, if you're drinking water, you're drinking a chemical. If you are eating food, you are eating chemicals. If you are washing your hands with soap, you are touching chemicals blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. Go on ad nauseum, right? And like, you may think that's a witty retort, but it's really, it's not helpful. It's not helpful. We all know that when people say, I don't want to eat conventionally produced food, I don't want to eat highly processed food because it's got chemicals. We all know that chemicals is shorthand. It is slang. It is lingo. It is an abbreviation. It is a way to reference a list of compounds that have potential health risks for humans. They know and you and I know, we all know that they don't mean I want a life free, devoid of all chemicals anywhere. We all know that when we consume food and when our bodies metabolize food, that is a chemical process. So please don't think that the person who says, I don't want chemicals in my body is this ignorant, right? Like you look like a snob. You look like an intellectual elitist. You are not helping the discourse with comments like this because 
You know, they know, we all know what people mean when they say chemicals. They don't mean water. They don't mean salt. They don't mean fructose. They don't mean sucrose. They don't mean basic carbohydrates, fats, and proteins that we all need to live, right? They're talking specifically about chemicals that are linked to cancer, that are linked to all kinds of, of health problems. And so I think it's really disingenuous to be flippant and dismissive of people's real health concerns. Living in a civilization where we have historically been exposed to all kinds of toxic things so that corners can be cut and corporations can reap a larger profit. We as American citizens have been exposed to all kinds of crap that is really dangerous and harmful and bad for us, right? For example, the kind of cancer that my mother died of, people get that kind of cancer because of exposure to asbestos. So when we talk about chemicals and everybody dismisses them out of hand with a meme like this crap right here, we're not helping the discourse and we're not finding solutions. We're not alleviating people's fears. We're not educating people. It's not helpful. It's not cute. It's not funny. It's not witty. Stop doing it. And I want to say that, that those fears are compounded by ignorance, right? Like when we educate ourselves, it erases so much fear. When we know what we're talking about, when we have competency, we don't have to be afraid. And part of the reason Americans in particular are so afraid of the names they see on an ingredients list is because they lack scientific literacy through no fault of their own, but through the culture that we've been raised in to fear science and to actually like not really emphasize scientific education particularly. And so when you have that combination of historical behavior from the government, from corporations, of poisoning people, of allowing harmful compounds into our food supply or into, into our textiles, into the soaps and detergents that we use, into medicines that we use. That history is there. That, that pile up, that backlog, that weight of all of that knowledge of the ways that people have been really, truly, and deeply harmed by chemicals, plus a lack of scientific literacy to understand when is something safe and when is it not safe? It's the same way that folks don't know the difference between ethyl mercury and methyl mercury. And because they do know that mercury is poison, that people are able to hoodwink them, to grift them when it comes to schmack scenes. People have been able to manipulate folks based on their fears and their lack of scientific literacy. Because communities, particularly communities of color and women, have been exploited and have been poisoned by the medical establishment, and because we lack scientific education, people are susceptible to false messages and to having their fears amplified, especially when it comes to things like schmack scenes, right? And it's no different with food or with... Per, with food or with other compounds that they're exposed to. The fear is legitimate and it is amplified by a lack of understanding and it is amplified by wellness gurus and grifters who want to prey on people's ignorance and whip up their fear so that they can sell their supplements, so they can sell their natural living, natural healing um, products, courses, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We in permaculture who care about people, who practice people care, need to care about having honest, helpful dialogue and discourse, not smug intellectualism that's like, well, ha, ha, you're just ignorant, but like actually speaks to people's real fears and helps educate them and bring them along and say, you know what, let's, let's dive into this subject. Let's learn about what we actually should be concerned about and what we don't need to fear, right? Oh, this compound on the back of this box that you're really worried about. And you saw a meme that said like, this is akin to jet fuel. Let's actually look up the chemical compound and let's talk about the ways that it's related to jet fuel. And let's talk away that that compound is bonded and the shape of that compound and how that impacts the behavior and how it actually is perfectly safe to consume and nothing like jet fuel whatsoever. And you have been um, taken advantage of by somebody who is hoping to prey on your scientific ignorance, right? Ignorance is not a shameful word. It just means uneducated. 
We should not be afraid to say we don't know. We should not be afraid of saying, I have not been schooled in this. I have not been trained. I am ignorant. Um, in fact, when people ask my advice on this channel for things like I don't know about, I always say like, like, bruh, don't ask me. I do not. That is not my wheelhouse. So when it comes to folks' legitimate con concerns and fears about what they're putting in their body, when it comes to folks using the slang chemicals to specifically mean chemicals I think have a detrimental effect on my health or perhaps the health of my children or perhaps the environment around me, then like, let's speak to that fear. Let's, let's explore that. Let's help people work through it. Let's help people learn to understand. Let's work in America to raise our understanding of science, to make science cool, make science something that everybody has a basic understanding of and we don't have to be afraid of. But also let's not deride people who were not given the same advantages that maybe you or I were to learn about these things, right? And their fears are real and people act out of fear. You may want them to act out of something else, but as long as they have that fear and lack of understanding, that's how they're going to behave. So I don't know. I'm just tired of seeing this meme. I'm tired of seeing it this week. It It is not helpful. If we want real regenerative societies of people, then we can't ignore people's lived experience. We can't ignore a history of harm that has been done. We can't dismiss what people are saying by using stuff like this. It reminds me of when people dismiss someone's entire argument because of a spelling or a grammar error. It's just not a good, it's not a good look. Let's not do it. Let's hear what people are saying. Let's try and have a thoughtful conversation with them about you know, that validates their fears and then helps educate them and helps them resolve those fears by understanding the realities of the situation. And also let's be real. Some people's fears are hundred percent legitimate, right? Again, wrongs have been done and there is crap in our food and there is the highly ultra processed nature of foods that make them a concern right? There are forever chemicals put into our laundry detergent, right? You wash your clothes and they smell really good for like three straight days. What do you think is being emitted off of those clothes? Persistent um, fragrance chemicals are not good for you, right? If you are um, looking at products that are applied on an industrial scale and a commercial scale in your community, Odds are those are not, those have real health consequences, whether they are for you personally, whether they are at a dose that is sufficient to be poisonous because dose makes the poison every time. Something that I think people also um, often don't understand because they haven't been taught that, that you can be exposed to a small amount of something and it can be completely fine and that you need to look at not only the immediate dose, but the cumulative dose of something. Um, and that understanding how much you've been exposed to and whether that actually poses a real health risk is really important. But not be dismissive of people's concerns. Not not play this game. Not play that mm, you spelled your Y-O-U-R when it should have been Y-O-U apostrophe R-E. So therefore I can laugh at you and dismiss all of your concerns. Like let's not do that. And then Let's work as a permaculture community to elevate science, to elevate scientific education. Permaculture is not woo. It is not fantasy. I've said that many times before. It is not anti-science. And if it tries to be anti-science, it will fail. The more we can learn, the more we can expand our understanding of biology, chemistry, physics, mathematics, the better off we will be when it comes to practicing permaculture, the more resilient we will be as individuals and as communities, and the more we will be better able to practice people care. So thanks so much for watching today. Please don't forget to click like and subscribe. Thanks to the folks who have checked me out on TikTok where I may be a little bit spicier. Let's be real considering everything going on in the world around us. Sometimes it's hard to not be sassy. So that's a forum where I think I use a little bit more of that uh, sass. And I thank you to folks who have followed me over there. I will be back really soon with a regular permaculture video. I think I think I have a House Frau Friday video coming out tomorrow. So um, please tune back. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye.